Hi everyone, it's Miss Spivey. Um, today we're going to talk about acids and bases. We are in Unit 10 in your Unit 10 book. So if you'll open up to page 5, we have some fill-in-the-blank notes. Um, you've heard about acids and bases before in probably middle school, probably biology. Um, but we're going to so we're going to retouch some things that you've heard before, and then we're going to do some calculations. So in general, acids taste tart. They're sour or sharp. So this column here goes with something being an acid. This column over here goes with something being base. So acids are sour, like lemons. Sorry about that, lemon. Acids are sour, like lemons. They conduct electricity. They are typically reactive with metals. They're liquids or gases. They turn litmus paper red and they have a low pH. So our pH scale is going to go from 0 to 14. 0 to 7 here are acids. That's what it means by low pH. Bases are bitter. They feel slippery like soap. They can be more dangerous than acids. I especially say this just because um, a lot of times when I tell people that we're working with um, concentrated hydrochloric acid, they get um, really worked up or oh hydrochloric acid but like concentrated sodium hydroxide is just as dangerous um it turns litmus paper blue and it has a high ph so from 7 to 14 you're a base 7.00 is neutral and that is typically water good old h2o so a couple of definitions if you turn your page page six in your film blank notes um um, Arrhenius and Bronsted Lowry are two different sets of scientists who um, studied acids and bases. So Arrhenius defined an acid as a substance that will increase the hydrogen ion concentration. So hydrogen ion concentration. This makes sense um, with our basic definition that we go over in Chem 1 where we talk about how acids have an H in front like HCl or HClO3. Uh, but Bronsted Lowry's definition, after you get out of Chem 1, this is always the go-to definition of acids because um, something can be classified as an acid without having an H in the front. Uh, so Bronsted Lowry says that acids is a substance that donates a proton to another substance. If you need to pause the video to write down your notes, please go right ahead and pause. Bases. Arrhenius says that bases create hydroxide ions, so we're going to start seeing this come into play in a little while. But again, uh, Bronsted-Lowry, this definition that I'm putting a box around, says that bases are proton acceptors, is a more commonly used um, definition. So like Arrhenius's definitions work great with what's called strong acids and strong bases. But ultimately, there aren't very many strong acids or strong bases, and Bronsted-Lowry's um, definition is more widely used. So if I look at NH3 and H2O, NH3 gained a proton from one side to another, so this would make it a base. It went from H3 to H4, and H2O lost a proton, so that would make it an acid in this case. So yes, water can be an acid. It can also act as a base. So pH stands for the power of hydrogen. It's a scale that shows the acidity or alkalinity of a substance. Um, write down these two formulas. pH equals negative log of H plus and H equals um, 10 to the negative pH. Two very important formulas to write down. All right. I'm going to skip that part where it says pH values, skip that slide. So here we are at the pH scale. The only way to tell if something is an acid or a base acid or base comes from pH and only pH. So a lot of the substances that you come across on a daily base basis are acids and bases. Um, so your stomach acid has a pH of 2, drain cleaner has a pH of 14, um, black coffee is acidic, apple juice is acidic. The place where it gets really um, dangerous is when you have high concentrated substances. So like pH or apple juice may have a pH of three, but we're still able to drink it because it's not a very highly concentrated acidic beverage. Okay, so pOH is just like pH. So pOH equals negative log of hydroxide and 10 to the negative pOH. 
So I'm going to write both of these, all of our formulas over here. These are your have-to-know formulas. pH equals negative log of H plus. Um, concentration of hydrogen equals 10 to the negative pH. pOH equals negative log of hydroxide. Hydroxide, 10 to the negative pOH and pH plus pOH equals 14. So what I want to do is show you how to use these equations really quickly because this video will only let me record until it is, um, it'll only let me record for 15 minutes. So flip over to page 13 with me in your unibook. So if you flip over to page 13 in your unibook, you look at number one. Number one says, what is the PA, if the pH of a solution is 10.3, what is the H plus concentration? So that clearly helps me to see that this is the equation we're going to use for number one on page 13. So um, H plus concentration is equal to 10 to the negative. Our pH this time is 10.3. So you can use your caret button here. So 10 raised to the negative 10.3 gives us 5.01 times 10 to the negative 11 molar. So that would be our answer. Okay. Number two says, if the hydrogen ion concentration is 2.1 times 10 to the negative 12, what is the pH? Is it acidic, basic, or neutral? So here's the equation we're going to use this time. I'm looking for pH given my concentration. So pH equals negative log, the concentration given to me in the problem, 2.1 times 10 to the negative 12 molar. And I type that in. So your log button is over um, next to the number 7. So negative log 5.01 second e to the negative 11 gives us 10.3. So there's our pH. Um, we know that this a solution is basic. I'll scroll back up here. If you have a base, uh, um, a pH of 10.3, that puts us here with um, on the basic side of the pH scale. All right. So let's look at number three. Calculate the pOH if the hydroxide ion concentration is 5.9 times 10 to the negative one. Is the solution acidic, basic, or neutral? So number three. We want our, this equation, pOH equals negative log. It gave us our hydroxide ion concentration, which is 5.9 times 10 to the negative 1 molar. So let's type it in. Negative log, 5.1 times 10 to the negative 1. And that gives me a pOH of 0 0.292. Now, the next question says, is it acidic? basic or neutral. As we said up above, we said, oh, not let me scroll. We said up here, we can only tell if a substance is an acid or a base if we know the pH. We calculated pOH. That is not the same thing. Luckily, I have a relationship that says pH plus pOH equals 14. So pH plus 0.292 equals 14. So that means to solve for my pH, I'm going to subtract 14 minus my pOH, and that gives me 13.7. pH of 13.7 is a base. All right, and let's look at number four. So number four says, what is the pH of a 0.033 molar KOH solution? So because I know the formula is KOH, it's giving me the hydroxide ion concentration. And so I know my hydroxide ion concentration is 0.033 molar. The problem wants to know the pH. So if I look up here at my handy dandy formulas, I am given hydroxide ion concentration. From that, I can find my pOH and then from pOH, I can solve and find my um, 
pH. So this is kind of like in math class when you do the f of g functions where you take one equation and put it into another and work from there. That's essentially what we're doing here. So um, my pOH is going to be negative log of 0 0.033. So my pOH is equal to 1.48. So 14 minus 1.48 gives me a pH of 12.5, and that is a base. So if you need more practice with these equations, um, finish page 13 and 14. Page 13 and 14 will help you with pH and pOH and all of our um, equations. So will page 12. Page 12 is a giant chart. If you see at the top of page 12, we have H3O+. plus. That's the same thing as having hydrogen ions, H+. Plus. So you know the hydronium ions since that's what we've been having you memorize forever. And page 11 even has... Um, really easy kind of questions to help with um, pH and pOH. So I'm at 11 minutes and I'm going to quickly discuss neutralization reactions and indicators. Um, neutralization reactions, we mentioned these in unit 6. We have you fill out your chart when we're going over notes and look at some examples. So remember neutralization reactions um, have an acid and a base. We recognize a base because it has an OH an acid because it has an H in front, and it always produces a salt, salt and water. So this has essentially worked like a double replacement reaction. The barium bonds with the chlorine, the hydrogen would bond with the hydroxide there. Okay, Indicators is a, a substance that's going to change color depending upon the pH of the solution. Um, so some quick and easy indicators that you've seen before, I know you've seen litmus paper, either in biology or in eighth grade science. Um, one very common indicator in, that you'll see in chemistry is called phenolphthalein. It'll change color. It'll be clear and colorless when it's in a, a basic solution, but it'll change to pink when the pH changes colors. I think I had a question down here. Um, so titrations are a way is a way in um, chemistry that we can take something from being acidic and make it basic um, and we can also calculate the concentration or the unknown concentration based upon that so that would use your dilution formula which you're going to learn about in a couple of days so indicators change color depending upon pH um, an indicator like phenolphthalein is used in a um, titration reaction. So let me see if I hit all of I needed to in your notes. Yeah, so that should get you to the bottom of page six. Big takeaways that you need from this lecture are general properties of acids and bases. We have five new formulas. And yes, you have to know those for your SOL test because we don't get a formula sheet. Um, and you also need to have heard the word for a neutralization reaction. So this is a very easy um, SOL question. If the pH is 4, what is the pOH? So we would just subtract 14 minus 4 equals 10. And because this pH is 4, I know that this substance is an acid. So if you need more help, please see a chemistry teacher work on the pages that I told you in this lecture, and they will happily check them for you. Thank you.